and keep it under like 10 seconds. But what's guys, only you first. Though. What's up, guys? I'm here with Will Rich. Only you the first. The legend. You go. The, the legend. <laughs> and we're by a window. And we're about to share some uh, new hot information off the press for Qubits 2025. We got the whole setup back there. Look at that. I'm telling Majid how he should do his intros, and he includes me, and I'm like, bro, just, 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 that's a great. What's up, everybody? It's Will and Majid, and we're doing a video on the first introductionary period for Qubits 2025. So we're going to go into the details, what we've seen so far, and the value that you might expect from the company in the near-term future, just based on the first few uh, impressions. What do you think, Majid? What was your first initial impressions? My first impression is that I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed with uh, the the Phoenician Resort, uh, which is a beautiful resort, first of all, uh, where uh, D-Wave is having the conference. Um, but just, I've been to a lot of conferences um, in my creative career, and this is one of the best conferences I've been to. I, I was very impressed with the opening keynote. What did you think? Yeah, I mean... First, the place is nice for sure. They have like all the food, you get like breakfast, you get all that. And we got inside and we have like these apple locator things for, th I don't know, it's cool. But once we get in and we start listening, first impression was, to me, I'm looking for more hard facts. So I really like how they do all their marketing. It's so good and it's so like attractive to watch the presentation it's yeah. just a nice place but one thing that i noticed that they say a lot in this you know you could see financials when you analyze the stock you could see like earnings you see revenue one thing that they do is they make a lot of uh assertions about some of the progress they made in terms of like we're increasing our efficiency or we're 10 times faster or now we're faster this year or 100 times faster and the first thing i'm saying compared to what that's what i keep asking myself like right. compared to what what are the metrics that are being compared um for quantum and yeah i was just talking with a guy in in there and he was saying he was looking to analyze and see how much um quantum could impact his company which is like big student loan company. They have millions and millions and millions of data points and they were looking at how it could impact. He seemed optimistic, but he was looking for the same thing. He's like, where is this something that I can do that I wouldn't be able to do with classical computing or GPUs that I could only achieve right. if I was using uh, D-Wave? And he hadn't found it yet, but the conference yeah. is early, so we don't know. But it, And it is early. And um, one of the things that I like about the, the CEO of D-Wave, Dr. Alan Baratz, is he um, he has a way with words. He's very um, he's very direct, and I really like that in a leader of a company. Um, when I'm looking uh, personally at, at a company, I want to see um, strong leadership. And you so one of these the, notes here, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, one yeah. of the one of the things he said early on uh, in the keynote is. We have an industry, a tech industry, that's spewing misinformation about quantum computers. And I thought that was such an interesting way to put it, spewing misinformation. <laughs> and I did agree, because you said misinformation, or like the spewing side of things. Like, it did seem kind of, because you mentioned like, is it a, if it was designed or not designed to increase the margins for how far people think quantum is away at that GTC conference yeah. in NVIDIA, yeah. right? They were saying, he was like, I'm not sure if that was the intention, yeah. but it definitely was not good for quantum, that, that conference. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, what you're saying about the misinformation, I mean, that's a, big, that's a big thing you think about. And that's the same thing I'm looking for. What's the hard information about a company that's yeah. indicating that yeah. they would be the go-to as opposed to GPUs? So that's, that's where my mind is at yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, but what other notes you got there? So, <laughs> so he also mentioned something uh, he, so after they made their claim for quantum supremacy, um, he made an interesting comment that you get a big target on your back. And we saw this when Microsoft released their Meherana 1 chip and all the, uh, the scientific community really pushing back on, on uh, the, the, basically the science that, that they released and disputed it. Um, and and uh, Alan was saying essentially the same thing that, that people were trying to... Um, Dispute, but not to the level I think that Microsoft got uh, disputed. I don't know if, if that's what you've been gathering, but it seems like they're, that the way um, that they publish their findings um, has made been less controversial. Uh, 
the way that they publish their findings has been less controversial. I think so, but at the same time, the way that they're publishing their findings is very, uh, I mean, I know marketing, right? So I know copywriting. Yeah, so, yeah. so a lot of it does get you excited and it's good, yeah. but I'm still looking for the hard numbers. Yeah. So th- that's what we're going to see here in this future sessions here. Yeah. And I think what we'll do is we could even have some of the interview here and then link the rest of the, or not even link it, just continue the rest of this right. video once we get even more information. Um, and some of the notes that, that we had written down or that I had written down about what you're saying with misinformation or like that they want, they want, when they're making claims or things like this, you have to. You have to verify them, but also whenever you make a claim that is ambitious, that D-Wave achieves some really big breakthroughs, which, which uh, you know, according to what we're seeing here, they are. And then when you have the uh, the um, the CEO's take on that, you're going to have other companies try and take you down. You're going to have other companies hit you, and so that's what he was saying uh, is that he, they're dealing with some of that backlash of when you make claims and you have other companies like no it's not no you know and (laughs) and so uh, one of the the examples that the ceo said was it's a triathlon is what you said quantum annealing is different than all the other quantum computing companies they're tackling a part of the triathlon of this quantum race that is the commercialization that other companies haven't achieved. And they said they have over 250 patents as well in quantum annealing. Right. So they, so, so he was asked um, on stage, are you worried about other companies catching up? And he's like, uh, not really. <laughs> he said it was more or less because of uh, the number of, of patents and just how long they've been working on annealing specifically. Yeah, um, but just because it's patent doesn't always necessarily mean that, it's, that it is a massive advantage. So that's the other thing is like, when we look at quantum annealing, you have to ask yourself too, um, why aren't other companies doing the same? Right, right. Not that it's necessarily bad. There's pioneer, it could be very Mm -hmm. good. But at the same time, it's like, why aren't other companies? Because they also say like, sometimes better to be the second mover than the first mover. Right. And so you got to think about that too. But but what what you're saying about the, um, when you're looking at the, use case is commercial and they have the patents and they're, mm-hmm. they're getting these contracts or all these companies that they're working with that's a piece of the triathlon the other piece is do you have all of the cash do you have all the does the technology truly solve breakthrough type of problems right, right. and uh so the other companies they're they're doing their research and development and they're doing that is qbts so I, I thought this was interesting. I, 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 I see we're going with this. So Boeing, um, he, this is something that was mentioned on stage. Uh, so right. Boeing was here at the conference this yeah, morning. So and Boeing. and, and yeah. uh, Dr. Barazzi says, hey, we had a rocky start because I was trying to uh, basically say, hey, this will be useful for your company. Um, and, and the uh, rep from Boeing at first was like, nope, th- th- this isn't useful. Um, but... What he said, and I wrote down this quote, is now that they are in this partnership with D-Wave, the ceiling is higher than they expected and the floor is lower. Mm-hmm. Or the, the, um, I think that, that is uh, what he said. Yeah, I don't want to misquote. No, so, that's what he said. so essentially they're getting even better results than they thought they were going to get. Um, and th- and it, building a plane. Well, no, they aren't getting the results yet. Because okay. that's what he said. Okay. He said, we have no results and we're in the starting phase. But the view of where it could the go. potential, right? That's what he said. Yeah. The potential, right? And he was for the Boeing. He was optimistic, and he gave a clear quote as well that I wrote down. But not that it's not going to have value. It's just he was saying that ceiling is higher for yeah. the future, and the the floor right. looks lower. But that they hadn't started and gotten results yet. So that's where I was looking for the the hard facts. And then also, one thing that the Boeing um, CEO said was, he said. Um, he said that quantum is for, or no, he said classical computing is for understanding, quantum is for calculating. And so if you think about it, classical computing, it gets you all the data, you have it all there, and you can maybe store it, which is another problem with some quantum computers, storing all the massive amount of data. And so you can understand it. And then he's saying quantum's for the calculating, the big problem that we're tackling. And 
it, se- it seemed like they have really big problems at Boeing that they're trying to calculate. Right, that right. I mean, there's so many variables. He sure. said, he's like, the variables are huge. You have people that show up to work. You have parts that don't arrive on time. You have all these millions of things that go into building an airplane. And he said, most of the time, we don't build an airplane on time. He's like, because of these variables, and each variable impacts a certain amount. Some impact more than others. Mm -hmm. And knowing how much each uh, variable impacts and how many there are and then calculating it all can give them a better look. I think that was in plugging into the, the revenue side. Yeah. How much money is it going to lose yeah. and or make them based on this? Variable, so. And we saw, you know, I, I think one of the things that we saw was Dr. Bratz directly address GTC and kind of that awkwardness that happened on stage. And he said that it seemed like the panel was designed to marginalize quantum, That's what which, said, yeah. which is, which is, Really, like he's very, very. Um, well, he didn't say he was designed. Though. He said whether it was designed or not designed. And he's not sure. That's right. what he said, which implied that he thinks it was designed. And he brought up the word. He brought up the <laughs> to, word uh, to instrument again. Yeah, um, yeah. So he thinks that it was designed to maybe impact and make it look like we're so far away and we don't have any advantage at all and we're not there's no threat to be had with yeah. quantum that's what he's saying jensen yeah. wong was saying, like trying to yeah. get, elicit by yeah. having right. that whole discussion and then what was the other piece of of that uh so so uh in that in gtc jensen yeah. had said oh we should just look at quantum as an instrument and not as oh, a computer exactly not as a computer yeah. um and and he did not like uh that he he said that that's kind of where he was saying that the marginalized he used that word marginalized mm-hmm. um and you know what well, one other um emerging theme um before we get back to the mm-hmm. conference but They're talking about energy a lot. And energy is the Achilles heel of a modern AI data center. Because every time you build an AI data center... Right, the climate side of things. Right. But also, but what you're saying about the GTC with the um, instrument, right? Yeah. He basically, in um, NVIDIA, a Jensen, he took the whole idea of a quantum computer and then tried to, like, change the whole view. Right. Which... If it's an innovative and a positive and optimistic view, that's awesome. But it was interesting to see him try and change. He's like, they're not quantum computers. It's accelerated quantum. Right. Why would you? T- yeah. I didn't quite understand the change. And maybe he was trying to like, potentially a negative view would be that he's shifting the identity of it, which would hurt. Or trying brand. to get ahead of it. But the positive right. would be that he's saying a quantum accelerated, like it's really good for the future and it's going to accelerate. And there's a yeah. really cool name for it. But anyway, going into the climate stuff. Yeah, so, so so even even if we just look at it, not even from the climate standpoint, but just how expensive it is, like, right, one, of, one principle of physics is nothing is free, right? Like energy isn't free. So every time we run compute and AI and data centers, it's costing a lot of money. Someone is paying that bill. Someone's paying that power bill. And we actually had the ULIC superconductor uh, on stage saying, we, we're trying to reduce costs. Who wants to pay uh, all this money if it's possible with optimization in quantum computers to reduce costs? Right, and Yulich, he, he was. they were saying that they had like, I think wind turbines and water turbines and stuff like that for, they were like more conscious of it. But the reason they're conscious too if, if, if you're trying to like cool down a quantum computer and you're doing the cryo approach, because that's mm-hmm. one approach that they're doing, that still takes energy to create the cryo approach unless you're in Antarctica or something like that, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but that was cool that they were build the, the climate approach. And I say climate because I think the whole like big picture of reducing the amount of energy spent. Mm-hmm. Ooh, he made an interesting quote. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you. What do you think about that? Because he, dude, he, he made a really interesting quote. You know what he said? He said, "So far, qu- quantum computing has been able to achieve more computing power with less energy, which we haven't seen from any class core GPU companies." But then I was thinking to myself, well, every time they improve a GPU or or classical computer, then that is a increase in uh, efficiency with usually less energy output. So I was like, I don't know if that claim was 100%. So I, 
I love this about you that you're always asking questions and you're skeptical, uh, and and that that makes you a great investigator, right? Uh, <laughs> and dude, so, I am an investor in yeah. like so I, uh, so am I. I yeah. We're all in this together, right. Um, right. but I I think um, it's it's definitely something where um, it's just a known problem. Like when when Meta and Google and and all these huge tech companies are building these massive centers, they also you, it's not it's not like oh we're gonna plug into the wall. Um, it, it's it's a problem. Like it, it's it's an issue and it and there's a significant cost yeah, um, yeah. and strain on the energy grid if you if you don't build out. Hundred uh, percent. So so that's where um, hey I mean if if there if that's a use case. If all quantum computers did, which which they'll do much more, but it, if all they did was uh, help with energy costs and make AI more efficient, yeah, that's better for the climate, right? It's better yeah. for yeah, it's, yeah, it would be, yeah. and and I think it, not even yeah, also climate. But when you look at the company's uh, missions, they also said that they were focused on. There was three points they made. Of I wrote them down here. They said marketing. Three focuses right now at QBTS. Marketing, which they're doing an amazing job. Technology, and then product. Yeah. So that was their three focuses. Now, one thing that I didn't hear, but obviously they're probably already doing it, is um, the way I approach business is customer first, then product, then competitors. So looking at competitors because that can give you some indication. Right. They're not worried about competitors. They're not, they're not following competitors in any way. So that was kind of off the table. Um, but the, the customer focus seemed like something. They're working with all these businesses. And uh, I don't know. What do you think about that? What do you think about the, the focus on marketing tech and product? Maybe not as much focus there. On- yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's great uh, that, that, you know, your, your notes here and on the way you're looking at it. And, um, I, I do say, do still think that quantum computer companies in general have a marketing and PR deficit. They, they need to be Usually. able to, yeah, they, they do. They, this one is good though. The, this one's very good. This yeah. one's very good. And I'm excited to get back uh, to the conference, but, um, this has been super fun. Will and yeah. we're, we're going to get back so we can get some more information. Um, and we will, uh, we will talk to you all soon. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get more information. We're going to go in there. We're going to go get some more quality value and then bring it back for the rest of this interview.